In the gritty underworld of the Kinahan Cartel, Jonathan Harding, a notorious gunrunner, has resurfaced in the cartel's former stronghold after being released from prison. Our confrontation with the 52-year-old unfolded in a Crumlin estate, Dublin, on a Wednesday afternoon as he casually strolled a dog through the cartel's once dominant territory. This seasoned criminal, released from Mountjoy Prison just before Christmas after serving extensive sentences for money laundering and weapons offenses, exhibited little joy when this newspaper approached him. The shadows of the criminal world seem to cling to Harding as he navigates the familiar but treacherous streets of the cartel's past. Pressed for a statement, Harding remained tight-lipped, responding with a firm, no, no, no. Attempting to shield his identity, he hastily hid his face behind a piece of paper, swiftly evading line of sight by darting around a nearby corner. Throughout his precinct stint, Harding's partner, Carol Davis, demonstrated unwavering loyalty by visiting him, despite having received a suspended sentence for her involvement in his money laundering operations. Surveillance captured these moments mere kilometers away from Liam Byrne's former residence in Raleigh Square, a property that has long fallen into the hands of the Criminal Assets Bureau, eventually being seized and recently sold. The echoes of the criminal empire's history linger in the air as we document the comings and goings in this shadowy realm. Currently detained at HMP Belmarsh in the UK, Liam Byrne awaits trial on 12 firearms charges. These charges are connected to a peculiar scheme involving sharing information about a weapons cache in exchange for a reduced sentence for Thomas Cavanaugh, the leader of the Byrne organized crime gang. Jonathan Harding, a convicted drug dealer and close associate of cartel boss Liam Byrne, has a lengthy history of involvement in organized crime spanning two decades. His criminal record dates back to 2004, when he was sentenced to six years in prison for being caught with nearly $800,000 worth of heroin and cannabis. Harding earned the moniker Rocket Man after eluding charges related to the 2010 seizure of two loaded rocket launchers in one of the initial law enforcement operations against the Kinahan Cartel. These disposable launchers, seized alongside a cocaine shipment, were designed for single-use, shoulder-fired deployment. The cartel stored these weapons in a rented shed at the rear of an industrial block on the Clane Road in Longtown, Straffen, Coquildare. While he escaped prosecution in connection to the rocket launcher seizure, Harding's luck ran out when he was apprehended by the Gardai while leaving a Kinahan armory at the Green Oak Business Park on January 24, 2017. This marked a significant event in the ongoing saga of criminal activities linked to the Kinahan cartel. Jonathan Harding and an accomplice drew the attention of Gardai when they were spotted driving a Ford Transit van to an industrial unit. Following their departure from the unit in the same van, the duo made a stop at a Texaco service station where they were subsequently arrested. Simultaneously, law enforcement officers entered the unit, uncovering a cache of firearms and ammunition described later as having the capacity to arm a small country. In the loft area, Loaded firearms were arranged on cardboard on the floor, including four ready-to-use revolvers and an AK-47 assault weapon. Additional guns and ammunition were discovered in two cardboard boxes, some sealed within bags alongside matching ammunition. This seizure, taking place during the height of the Hutch Kinahan feud, brought to light the previously unknown logistics manager of the cartel, Declan Brady. Brady, identified as the one overseeing and in overall charge of the weapons, was later sentenced to 11 years and six months, with the final year suspended. Jonathan Harding, having pleaded guilty to possessing nine revolvers, four pistols, a submachine gun, an assault rifle, and various ammunition magazines as a result of the raid, was sentenced to nine years in prison in 2018. This incident marked a significant blow to the operational capabilities of the Kinahan cartel during a turbulent period of gang conflict. A second individual, James Walsh, was handed a nine-year sentence for being in possession of weapons. Following the raid, Gardai initiated a separate investigation into Jonathan Rocketman Harding's financial affairs. Over the span of five years, from 2012 to 2016, an amount exceeding $470,000 was deposited into five accounts held by Harding and his partner, Carol Davis, 
with withdrawals totaling over $422,000. Detective Sergeant Tom Anderson, from the Garda National Drugs and Organized Crime Bureau, revealed during the proceedings at the Special Criminal Court that although Harding identified as a self-employed mobile mechanic, he lacked limited company status or a registered trading name. Revenue figures exposed Harding's meager declarations of income, amounting to just $6,111 in 2014, $22,056 in 2015, and $34,659 in 2016. During the three interviews conducted with Harding, it was pointed out that $197,000 had traversed through Ms. Davis's accounts over the five-year period. Detective Sergeant Anderson informed the court that Harding had firmly asserted during the interviews that Ms. Davis was definitely not involved in any criminal activities. Ms. Davis, when questioned by Gardai, stated that she had no suspicions regarding the accounts and remained unaware of the money's inflow and outflow. This financial investigation shed light on potential illicit financial activities linked to Jonathan Harding, raising further questions about the extent of his involvement in criminal enterprises beyond the weapons charges. Following a forensic analysis of the accounts, it was revealed that over $44,000 was expended solely on travel from 2014 to 2016, along with $40,000 allocated to a mobile home. Jonathan Harding's accounts reflected a $52,000 expenditure on travel, although Detective Sergeant Anderson indicated that Gardai lacked the means to identify the individuals who utilized those flights. In total, 100 flights were purchased between 2014 and 2016 from all five accounts. Harding admitted guilt to five charges of converting, transferring, or handling property between January 1, 2012 and December 31, 2016 within EBS, Bank of Ireland, and AIB accounts, representing the proceeds of criminal activities. Concurrently, Ms. Carol Davis pleaded guilty to three offenses between January 1, 2014 and December 31, 2016, associated with accounts registered in her name at EBS, AIB, and Bank of Ireland. The court was informed that Ms. Davis had no prior convictions and was not on the Garda radar before or after her arrest in 2018. This financial analysis provided insights into the significant sums spent on travel and other expenses, raising additional questions about the origins and purposes of these funds. Jonathan Harding found himself sentenced to five years and three months behind bars, while his partner and co-accused walked away from the courtroom with a suspended sentence. Harding's release from prison aligns with a trend of various influential cartel figures regaining their freedom over the past 18 months. Among them is Liam Brannigan, once considered the Kinahan cartel's third-ranking operative in Dublin. We captured his release from Portloy's prison in November, having served a mere six years for his involvement in a murder plot. Originally handed an eight-year sentence, Brannigan was convicted of playing a central role in the ill-fated cartel conspiracy to assassinate Gary Hanley in 2017. Dean Howe, another conspirator and cartel enforcer, was released from Mountjoy Prison in December. Additionally, Graham the Whig Whelan, a senior Kinahan gang member, was photographed after his release from Mountjoy in December 2022. Whelan served 14 months for money laundering offenses including the possession of a $28,000 watch. In conclusion, the criminal landscape, particularly associated with the Kinahan cartel, remains a dynamic and concerning phenomenon. The release of Jonathan Rocketman Harding, coupled with the freedom granted to other key cartel figures, underscores the challenges law enforcement faces in curbing organized crime. These individuals, once involved in intricate plots and heinous activities, are now back on the streets, raising questions about the effectiveness of sentencing and the broader criminal justice system. As these influential figures regain their liberty, the potential repercussions for public safety linger, emphasizing the ongoing struggle to address and mitigate the impact of organized crime networks.